All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Solutions Corner with Matt and Carolyn. Excited to be talking to you again. It's been about a month now, hasn't it, Carolyn? Yes, it has. And, you know, as the series progresses, we will be introducing you to Rikers from across the organization that have helped develop these value enablers. So I am thrilled to introduce you today as we welcome Lead Solutions Consultant, Liv Gartz. Welcome, Liv. Yes, thank you guys for having me. Um, I guess a little bit of introduction. I'm a lead solutions consultant here at Reich. Um, as you know, I work with some of our enterprise customers, really just helping them map out what their future state will look like in Reich. So we're really focused on providing them a glimpse into that one best way before they go through any kind of deployment. And Carolyn, thank you so much for looping me in just to showcase our new ticketing value enabler. Yes. And, you know, this value enabler is uh, near and dear to my heart because I used to be one of those customers that uh, Liv works with. Um, and one of the biggest, you know, pain points that I found was, you know, using a shared inbox to manage tickets and requests. And, you know, this caused a lot of confusion amongst the teams and there was no visibility as a leader to know, you know, how long requests were taking for resolution or even the productivity of my team. Yeah, and that's like my past. I have a, an IT background, and I think sometimes tickets would like cause this groan. It's like, oh no, I've got to go and support a ticket. But really, when you start looking at Reich and getting out outside of that IT lens, it's really like tickets and requests. And and it's like, how do we take, you know, what was this chaotic process, whether it was email, someone calling you on the phone, wherever it is, and like give a little bit of composure, structure to that and really make everyone's lives better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, Liv, we're so thrilled that you're here. And, you know, what inspired you to really create a solution like this? Yeah, I'm I'm excited to be here. Um, I would say a couple of things. One is working with our customers and hearing from so many different departments within these large organizations that they struggle with the same things you guys both brought up. So shared inboxes, getting analytics into all of these one-off requests that are coming in um, across the organization. And then also from my own experience, I used to work on our commercial side and we were in a pooled model. And so our sales team requested our support and, you know, we formulated essentially um, a lot of parts of the value enabler I'm going to show you to, to make that request and support process not only easier, but to get those metrics up to our leadership to show them what we're doing day in and day out. Yeah, it makes the the process of email actionable. And I think that's my biggest pet peeve. Like there, there's a great use for email. There's always a great need for it, but you don't have that action with it, right? And a lot of a lot of times, whether it's an email request, a chat request, or even like the phone call I mentioned, you need you need a way to make that actionable. Otherwise it could get lost in the ether. So it's like I see it with with marketing, right? Maybe they have a, a request where someone needs to request um, design services or when you get into professional professional services. Maybe they need to request a team to come in and, and scope a deal from that standpoint, you know, and even, you know, from a manufacturing team, they need to request a change to a physical product. PMO, you could request a, a new project and have a PMO review it. The list just goes on and on and on and on and on, but really get that out of email and give it structure. Yeah, let's, let's jump into this. I can't wait to see. Yeah, I'm excited to show you. So here I'm logged into our ticketing value enabler and it really all starts with our command center. This is where a team manager or somebody running this process will be able to see how everything is rolling through that process. They can see as things are escalated and start to get metrics around assignment and where different tickets or requests are sitting. Additionally, we can start to take action on these items, such as providing progress comments or changing statuses, all from this singular view. This is a very um, big add-on to that centralized email solution where we're able to see not only everything that's coming in through that queue, but also the metrics around it. 
This is really great. I love how you can action everything directly from this one, you know, visual dashboard. You know, Liv, um, I, I was just looking at the top there and I noticed some categories. Does that mean that we're able to actually drill in and get more granular into the dashboard? Yes, yeah, so we have um, parameters already provided within the value enabler, but you can always add additional parameters to allow you to see a breakdown, the same level of information, but organized by maybe priority, for instance, or request type. You can actually add multiple on top of each other, so you can drill in and drill out without having to create different dashboards. That's awesome. Liv, I was going to, you know, comment, I think one of the, the, the little naming convention you had there, but like really resonates with me is the fire drill issues at the bottom. I think, you know, one of the challenges that ticketing and requests have is like understanding what what's the noise that's coming our way versus what's that, that really big problem where we need focus. So I think like really being able to like understand like this is where we need to make an emergency pivot and and kind of raise that to the surface is an important part of um, ultimately your command center dashboard. Yeah, thanks for calling that out. Um, I would say nine times out of 10, that's what my customers use to, to talk about high priority things that need to be addressed right now is just a fire drill. And so we built that in because I think it touches for really any, any team. Yeah, so great. all of these requests will be coming in through a submission process. Now here we've built a form um, to be really general. So like we you know just talked about, Request ticketing hits on every single department that's supporting some part of the organization, whether that's supporting their customers, their internal teams or whatnot. And so we've built just that generality into the request form within this value enabler. So you can select the different type of requests. And again, here's where you can tailor to your specific needs as a customer. Let's say I'm in our professional services department and I need a statement of work to be reviewed by legal. I can select legal support and then I have additional options, whether I need to report something to legal, whether I simply need to ask a question or if I need to schedule a call with an expert. And each of those different actions will have another set of questions that kind of meets the expectation for what's being requested. So here, different types of request processes are all built into the same solution. And that's kind of what leads to the name of, you know, ticketing slash request, because um, we, we hit on really both types of uh, cues coming in. And speaking of that, uh, ask or talk to an expert, uh, Liv, I think the... Uh thing that I often see is like marketing teams are, are putting this to use, whether, you know, I mentioned earlier, maybe you have a specific request from a marketing team or like an asset review, but from that expert standpoint, you talk to marketing customers more than any of us. So like, what, what are the type of things that you often see requested um, or are, are, are process needing this request process? Yeah, I think with marketing, with creative specifically, um, you know, you have just reviewing of assets. I know sales just wanting to share executive reviews yeah. or any decks with their customers definitely wants that pass for marketing. And then you also have just your brand teams, which I think we often forget about in the world of marketing. Um, they Everything needs to pass through to make sure that it, it's up with the most recent branding. And so that is a big area where um, email is used more often than not, but there you don't really get the the information on the back end of how much work, how, how many things are passing through, where are these requests coming from? Yeah, marketing at that epicenter, launching a product, right? They need teams, teams coming to them from all over the place, needing their services. And if that's happening in email, it's, it's probably a, a pretty chaotic process. 100%. Um, so once this form is submitted, it will enter into the queue and be visible within, again, that ticketing command center within the backlog. And so all new requests will filter through this backlog and now be able to be prioritized. Um, something that is just really not possible with email, right? You, you can flag it, but there's no breakdown of priority, escalation, where is this coming from as far as analytics within those, those emails coming in. And so here I can see that new legal request, I can give it a priority, and then I can take it from 
those backlog items that have been prioritized and actually drop it on a team member's plate. And so here as the central controller of this process, and that could be a team manager, it could be an individual that's um, you know just playing air traffic controller, I can actually see how many items are assigned to each of my team members. And so this gives me a really easy way to start resourcing based off of actual capacity. And you know, if, I think we all know Reich has very in-depth and granular ways of resourcing that can be added onto this process. But if we're moving or for a lot of our customers that are moving just from emails coming in and individuals grabbing them off of that backlog, this is an easy starting point. Yeah, very easy to use. We can see that users will be able to, you know, um, adopt this really quickly and really ensure that teams have their fair share of work. Yeah, and um, another common process we've seen, and it's also been built into this value enabler, is just grabbing items that are coming in through the queue as I have the availability. So rather than maybe even having that air traffic controller role, everybody on the team will go into the shared inbox and respond to things as they have time in their day. And so We've built that into the process here, but with the added ability to get analytics on who actually responded to that request, because that's what's you know going to filter into that dashboard at the end of the day. So it's a really simple, just drag and drop. When I move a ticket to the assigned category, it will automatically assign to me and it will show up in my daily dashboard. And so as an individual contributor, I can easily see what's coming in through the queue give it to myself, and then run my day through my work dashboard where I'm able to see everything that's assigned to me. That automation. Yeah, I die without that personal yeah. dashboard, right? Like having that, like that place you could start your day, see what's in front of you, get the, the quick wins that you have, and then also maybe some of the bigger problems too. Yeah, 100%. And then um, kind of the last key view that we have here is reporting against SLAs. So huge for any team, right? Especially if you are responding to uh, pertinent requests across the organization, but an area that's often hard to report on if you don't have a system. And so within our value enabler, we've built out just the simple SLA performance portion of the dashboard where I can see what is the average time that these items are spent in overdue status? What's the average time to close? And then I can break those down for the different requesting departments. So as I go into conversations with the leaders from those different areas of the organization, if they have any complaints or we need to talk about streamlining processes, I can actually bring up how we're performing against their SLAs. And this will always be updated in real time. And so you can um, start to get those key metrics to make those data-driven decisions. This is great, Liv. Yeah, I think I think what's what's neat, and I know you said it in your intro, and it's worth just doubling down on. But I, I think you, what you've designed with this value enabler is the ability to not only give that initial structure, right, like getting that that process more mature by pulling it out of email chat wherever, but then the next natural part of transformation is like let's improve. Like how can we continuously improve? So you need metrics and data and to hopefully help guide you through that process. So I think you've looked at the the beginning to help someone get started, but then you also have the tools in place for them to um, start building and improving on that process too. So well done, Liv. Um, thanks for taking a moment to share this solution with us. Um, it was great for you to join us, um, give us a little insight into kind of what you're seeing from all of our right customers and also a little bit of into the mind of the engineer behind this with what you've designed here. So really appreciate um, you joining us today and sharing this solution. And Carolyn, um, how can uh, people get this solution in their environment today? Yeah, so if you guys have loved what Liv has showed us today, please either leave a comment under this video, fill out the request form, and a member of our solution innovation team will be in touch with you to get this installed in your instance. And don't forget to visit Solutions Corner on the right community um, and share your ideas and feedback on this because we're always looking to improve. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, y'all.